हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेशन वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द नीड फॉर कैनोनिकल फॉर्म्स और वी कैन से दैट इंट्रोडक्शन टू द कैनोनिकल फॉर्म्स लेट्स बिगिन यस सो नाउ इफ यू हैव स्टडीड सो फार सो फार वी हैव सीन दैट यस वी हैव अ स्टेट स्पेस मॉडल व्हिच इज नथिंग बट x डॉट इक्वल टू a x plus b u and we have got this y equal to c x plus d u right this is our state space model right yes now in the previous session we have seen that how to get transfer function out of the state space model you know we have seen that how to get a transfer function out of the state space model and and in order to have so we have written that yes y of s is nothing but C into S I minus A inverse into B plus D, right? Into we have this U of S. This is what we have already seen, right? And yes, this particular whatever has been written in blue is nothing but the transfer function. Whatever is written in blue is nothing but the transfer function, right? That is what we have understood. But now we need to check that you know. what are the different canonical forms and basically what is the need of having those forms so we need to understand one thing that see always transfer function approach if you see transfer function for example you have a system let us say you have a system right you have some input to the system you have some output to the system right output and you have some input right basically this is a system let me think of only ciso system single input single output system so this is one input and this is going to be one output so it is called as a ciso system right so now if you see here for any system transfer function transfer function is always unique what do we mean by unique meaning that this system this particular system can be shown by only one transfer function that is for sure transfer functions will not change but the same system can have more than one state space models more than one state space models this is very very important so when i am saying that transfer functions are unique transfer functions will be only one but the same transfer function but the same transfer function will have more than one state space model so i can say that state space models state space models are not unique are not unique right so you just check this out see here so for this particular system in order to make when i am saying that state space models are not unique which means there are different what do you say forms of state space representation right means this particular system this particular system let me change the color yes this particular system this particular system can be shown in different forms of state space models in different forms of state space models so those particular different forms of state space models why because we have seen that state space models for a particular given transfer function or a particular given system is not unique the moment it is not unique which means the same system the same system can be represented into different different forms of state space models and those different forms of state space models are called as canonical forms this is the concept those are called as canonical forms since state space models are not unique we have to represent it into different different forms and th those are nothing but called as canonical forms so let us try to understand what are the different forms of canonical right see yes so canonical forms if you see canonical forms if you check you have four types of canonical forms the first one is nothing but the first one is nothing but controllable canonical form then the next one is going to be observable canonical form 
then the next one is going to be yes next one is going to be diagonal canonical form and the last one is nothing but jordan's canonical form now how are these forms derived how to show them in a shortcut way everything we will discuss in detail in a separate video but before that let me tell you one thing see if you are representing your transfer function t of s now we know that transfer function t of s which is there yes definitely this t of s is what yes from this this is nothing but that t of s this c into si minus a inverse into b plus d right this is nothing but the transfer function see why because when i am saying that it is ciso system then i can definitely show that it is y of s upon u of s right but the moment i say that it is a mimo system i cannot do this i cannot do this why because in mimo system this y of s and this u of s are now vectors are now vectors but here when i am talking about ciso system everything is fine so in ciso system i can term it as y of s upon u of s please remember this point right now see here so if for example your t of s if it is represented in a fashion like for example b not into s raised to n plus b1 into s to the power n minus 1 up to bn means basically what are you doing here firstly you had 0 then you have 1 you are increasing it up to bn and you had this s to the power n you had first and now you are decreasing the power by 1 at the end you will be getting s to the power 0 which is nothing but equal to 1 only right so it is that way and yes divided by let us say s to the power n plus a1 into s to the power n minus 1 up to let us say a n because see here yes definitely if this is a1 then we are increasing it like a2 a3 a4 a2 a3 a4 and so on up to i am going to have to a n minus 1 into s plus a n am i right yes so if you just check out here if you see the denominator the denominator if you see the denominator if it is in the form of a polynomial of s if it is in the form of polynomial of s of s or we can say in terms of s then that will be represented by these two forms which is controllable and observable canonical form controllable and observable canonical form whereas whereas if you have your transfer function like this like v naught into s power n let the numerator be same plus b n divided by let us say s to the power let me call s plus p1 s plus p2 into s plus p n right but if I have it in this form, if the denominator is in this form, in the forms of factors or we can say in the form of poles, in the form of poles, then in such a case, yes, definitely in such a case, what we can do is because see here, here this one, which is shown in red, 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 if you see this red, this is nothing but polynomial of S, yes, right, this is in terms of polynomial of S, whereas, this particular green this particular green is now in forms of poles in forms of poles so for such a type of transfer functions we are going to show them by diagonal and jordan's canonical form how do we do that we will see in the subsequent sessions right now you may ask me sir what is this s to the power n n on let me tell you see here do you agree with me that the degree of numerator is n yes because the highest index or the highest degree in the numerator is n similarly the highest degree in the denominator is n so we have already seen that when degree of numerator is equal to degree of denominator then it is called as what proper transfer function proper transfer function whereas if you see if the degree of numerator is less than degree of denominator then such a case we call the transfer function as strictly proper transfer function strictly proper transfer function so in our most of the practical cases we will be having strictly proper transfer function and yes definitely we can have some proper transfer functions when we have how we have we will talk about them in the time right so we can yes definitely in 
many of the cases we only have strictly proper transfer function but in some cases we may also have proper transfer functions now view please tell me can we by any means have that the degree of numerator is greater than degree of denominator no we cannot have this we have seen in this very first uh, sessions that yes this is not possible degree of numerator can never be greater than degree of denominator so this case is cancelled out but yes degree of numerator can be equal to degree of denominator and it is called as proper transfer function if the degree of numerator is less than degree of denominator then it is called as strictly proper transfer function so for the worst case scenario in all the forms we will be talking about proper transfer function only because once we have understood for proper transfer function strictly proper transfer function can be easily done how just see here the moment i say that it is going to be a strictly proper transfer function which means that this term this term will be vanished the moment this term is vanished this b naught will also get vanished am i right yes because if this term is zero then b naught has to be zero right it means that b naught is not existing so you will understand that in the coming time yes definitely now another thing i want to tell you is that this b naught this b1 and this b and what are they they are just nothing but the coefficients of the numerator and this a1 a n minus 1 a n and all these are nothing but the coefficients of denominator coefficients of denominator whereas if you think of the s plus p1 s plus p2 and all they are this p1 p2 p3 are nothing but the poles of the transfer function right so yes so now we have studied about the introduction of the canonical forms now in the subsequent sessions we will be talking about controllable canonical form after that observable canonical form and then next forms yes so in the subsequent sessions we will be talking about all these forms in detail which means controllable canonical form then observable canonical form diagonal canonical form and jordan canonical form that's it thank you